Hello, welcome to Chapter 3 Podcast, the show for readers of science fiction, fantasy, and romance. Welcome to Season 3, Episode 1. I can't believe we've made it three seasons in. And um, yeah, I'm excited for the new year, especially Mm -hmm. because most of our episodes this year are going to be live streams where people can interact if they want to. And to some extent, we'll do some comments. Uh, Today, me and Izzy are starting off the year strong, talking about our most anticipated well not even most anticipated our anticipated romance releases for 2023 so this Mm -hmm. is like all the books we're interested in and know about so far and we're gonna go in chronological order it's heavily uh traditional published i feel like yes because indie books we find out about like a month ahead (laughs) yeah so yes yeah and because we're doing that we will not do an on my radar this time because Mm -hmm. this is everything (laughs) on our radar for the coming month in romance um and future months in the year but Mm -hmm. we'll revisit some of this as we we learn more things they'll be on the radar (laughs) most likely again it's yeah and there'll there'll be more things that'll get Mm -hmm. announced throughout the year that we don't know about yet but yeah, welcome everyone. Um I see a couple people popping up in the comments. So hello. Yes, hello y'all. And let me pull up our slides. We have for those Yay. of you who are <clears throat> watching us on YouTube, we do have a nice little slideshow for you with our anticipated releases. So hope you enjoy. Thank you Izzy for putting this together. Yeah. That's cute. And I tried. Uh, gonna... I tried to give us yeah. some visual interest. I, I like... love it. I love it. It's great. I love slideshow. Uh, So we're going to begin with January. And Mm -hmm. I guess we'll just kind of alternate. And we kind of both added books to this. So we'll see how this goes. Well, we'll, we're going to go with it. There are months that I have none and you have a couple. We're just going to. And I'm sure some of these we both are interested in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like when I went to add mine, there were a few that I was like, yeah, I mean, that was. I tried not to put all of the ones that I thought we'd be interested in. I was like, let me try and make this a little. um, Yes you know, different, yes. <laughs> some different things that maybe people aren't going to see. Fair, totally fair. Oh, I wanted to say this. Hi, Caitlin. Read Colleen Hoover and didn't like it, hoping to have some other romance recommendations. New to romance except Outlander. Okay, wonderful. So yes, hopefully this will give you some cool things. I don't yeah. believe we have any Colleen Hoover on this list. That's, because that's not on this list. Um, we are not anticipating her releases, but plenty of other people are. Um, mm-hmm. But it's not on our list, so... <laughs> I would, I would let her be your reflection of the romance genre is what Please. I will say here to not be controversial <laughs> or mean, but that's, that's what we'll say. We'll say she's not a reflection of the genre. No, so there's, I mean, there's, there's a lot more to be found. Her books are like lifetime movies. That's what I like to say, you know, emotional popcorn reads. Yeah, exactly. All right. So let's dive right in. Okay. January 3rd. I am currently reading this. I should have been done I already. I just got my library hold in for this. <laughs> so I have an arc of, I have an arc of it, but I'm halfway through. It's cute. I so. I was excited when Talia announced that she was going to have her YA debut this year. Um yeah. and this cover it's an adorable This cover. is what we I should, want. For from people listening covers. on the podcast, we should tell people oh. it is highly suspicious and unfairly cute by Talia Hibbert. It is her YA debut. Mm-hmm. It is a really cute illustrated cover. Yeah, it's got actually like detailed faces on the mm-hmm. characters. And like, it's very like that fun, like swirly font. Yeah. Going on, you know, like played with the less swirly font look, mm-hmm. the more mm-hmm. serif font, I guess. Or actually, I think that's sans serif. Whatever. I won't Whatever totally geek out about fonts, <laughs> but I just <laughs> like how, how they played it up. And so you're in the middle of this. What, do you, what are you yeah. thinking so far? How are you like? It's, it? it's cute. I'm really enjoying it. So childhood best friends who became enemies mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, they're reconnecting. And they're surviving, like, doing a challenge in the woods? There is a survival. Yeah, part of the book is that. It's not the whole okay. book, but there is a part yeah. of it that is survival challenge in the woods. Yeah. So I'm liking yeah. it. It's cute. And they seem to be pretty polar opposites as they've grown up, like, from childhood a little bit. Yeah. Like, like she's... A little more quirky, she's I guess. Quirky, quirky and nerdy and introverted. Mm-hmm. He's on the soccer team, which is part of what separated them in the first place. But they both are neurodiverse, and it's great. Oh, love it. Yeah. All right. 
this is yours. Yes. Uh, so Longing by Chase Verity. I adore Chase Verity. If she's an indie author that I highly recommend people check out. She writes a lot of sapphic and uh, and then romances as well. And just very massive variety. Like you can find it all with her. Um, and this is just a sapphic novelette she wrote about two women who met playing a MMO online. Um, and they spend like a weekend together. I don't know that it's in person. I think it might all be, be like via messaging or the phone or something, but it's like 20 pages. And I just think that sounds like such a fun setup, something different. We don't, we don't get a lot of like nerdy gamer romances. Yeah. So I love that. immediately for me, I was like, I'm in. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that sounds fantastic. And we love, we love sapphic romances on this podcast. Mm-hmm. Awesome. All right. Next up, January 24th. Okay, this I heard about from Olivia Dade. Because <laughs> she's friends with this author and it sounds mm-hmm. really fun. January 24th is Chick Magnet by Emma Berry. And I think this is her traditional debut. This is Dislike to Love with a Veterinarian and a Chicken Influencer. I have an arc of this and I have not read do it Do you? And it it's on my like fun. January TBR because I was like, this okay. sounds so goofy. Yeah. So it's a rom-com and like he's mad because her chicken influencing on social media is getting all these people to start getting chickens as pets who don't know how to properly take care of them. <laughs> Which like sounds, sounds so accurate. <laughs> like, yeah. like it just it feels right. You know, you yeah, got this pet. Yeah. You, it's like, what, are, what are you doing? Exactly. <laughs> it looks so cute. It does. And then this uh, I also have. I have an arc of it. I haven't read it yet. Another sapphic romance, January 31st, Behind the Scenes by Corellia Stutz Waters. The tagline is Lights, Camera, Attraction. It's a sapphic rom com with movie making and cute pugs. So, what more I, could I you want, really? I love with the pugs on it. They're very cute. They are cute. Yeah. And I heard somebody say that they really enjoyed it who follows mm-hmm. me. So, I, I have high hopes for this one. Yeah. I, 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 think, it, I think it might be good. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Cover gives me good vibes, so we'll, we'll say it yeah. might be good. Yeah. Also, they kind of look like opposites, like kind mm-hmm. of a professional buttoned-up lady and somebody with, you know, shaved half her head. And I don't know. I think it, it looks like it could be fun. Mm-hmm. For sure. I like that. I think, yes, that will take us into February. Um, also, I love that I think this was about the chicken influencer, but fantastically taboo books. Carrie says, what? I'm deaf picking that up. So I'm guessing people are excited about the chick magnet book, which is it's great. Just, it's a, the perfect premise. Like, I <laughs> want more like premise. really, I love a weird premise like that. Agreed. February. Let's see what we got. Ah, this is on both yes. our lists. Actually, yeah. this might be a good time to do some announcements. I think so. Yeah. Do you want to do you want to announce the thing or do you want to talk about the book first? Uh, let's talk about the book and then we'll announce okay. some future plans for the podcast for our romance listeners. Yeah. So February 7th, we've got Radiant Sun by Katie Robert, the next in the Dark Olympus series. This one's Cassandra and Apollo. Forced proximity, forced dating, or fake, not fake, forced dating, fake dating, <laughs> dating. Fake dating. <laughs> fake dating. Um, to like help her escape the city, it kind of sounds like is the setup. And I, I mean, I love this series immensely. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm very excited. I'm more excited for the one coming out later this year that's yeah. also on our list yes. uh, because it's messy. But this one also, I think, is going to be a good fun, good time. Yeah, I really enjoy them. We have a question. Caitlin says, is that a Greek gods romance? I think I've seen it before. It is mm-hmm. very loosely. So yes. it is a modern kind of modern kinky romance series that is very loosely inspired by the greek gods uh i wouldn't call it a retelling i would say i would call it um like mafia-esque almost too okay yeah sort of like they have similar feelings to some of those kinds of books but more uh higher stakes almost in a way because of the way that they're like ruling the city of olympus um or i guess maybe even royalty almost yeah. Like a mix of those two. two uh, yeah, it's kind of like a, a mashup, but I, I've mm-hmm. been enjoying them. Oh, Beth says, I've had some blind <laughs> dates that quickly felt like forced dating. 
fair. It's my own fault. I was reading Forced Proximity and Fake Dating at yeah. the same time in my eyeballs. And I was like, no, that is, you are combining things. Nope, like, do not, not, not things. <laughs> no. Uh, so we are going to briefly pause this list to give you our announcements of what to expect for the coming several months mm-hmm. on the romance episode. So for anybody who missed the the end of season two we talked about the fact that this year instead of having an episode once every two weeks we will just have two a month which means some months where we might have had three episodes we'll just have two so you will get one sci-fi fantasy episode from us with me and liana and one romance episode from us with me and izzy and uh we've already announced with liana we're doing a witcher read-along for most of the year which i think will be really fun so Mm -hmm. we'll talk more about that later but um izzy we're doing a few things so february we have a read-along we have a few different things planned so february what are we doing we're reading real by kennedy ryan yes uh which has been on both of our tbrs for a while Mm -hmm. which is great uh, and a good, like, it's going to be, a, a, I'm probably going to cry. Bethany's probably going to cry reading it. We're both going to cry. And I'm very yeah. excited. <laughs> Don't hurt books cry. always make us cry. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. So I'm very excited to cry um, while we read Kennedy Ryan, who is just an amazing author. If anyone hasn't read her yet, I think this one could be a great starting point for what I've heard Absolutely. about it. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Really so if you want to read along with us, that's going to be mid February, we'll be doing an episode on real by Kennedy Ryan. So um, if you want to read along, we're doing that. And then in March, we're making Izzy read her very first Jane Austen. Yeah, which is exciting and making me watch an adaptation that I wasn't going to watch. <laughs> I mean, I'll probably also watch the adaptation that I was not yeah. going to watch either, but it's fine. Yeah. So persuasion. Uh, persuasion yeah yeah first Jane Austen uh, y'all yep yep so we're I, gonna I read persuasion and made watch. It this far. Yep. so we'll talk uh book versus movie see what mm-hmm. we think if you want to read along with us that should be fun and then for a good chunk of the rest of the year we are going to be doing a read-along of the gods of olympus is it gods of olympus dark, dark, olympus. Olympus. dark olympus the dark olympus series by katie robert mm-hmm. beginning with neon gods mm-hmm. in april so if you've been meaning to read them you want to continue with them you can read along with us and we will do an episode every month for all of the books as they have been released thus far and then Mm -hmm. maybe we'll convince katie to come on and talk to us at some point that would be fun hopefully hopefully fingers crossed so yeah plans for romance Me too. I think it's going to be fun. So there you go. Get your TBRs ready and join us for some read-alongs throughout the year. And we will move along with more of our February anticipated releases. Okay. Yes. Okay. Have you read this one or did you just find out about it because it was going to get traditional release? No, but I have an arc of it for the traditional release. So uh, this is one of my all-time favorite books coming out February 14th on a re-release called Take the Lead. I read this forever ago when it was indie published. It briefly vanished (laughs) off the internet as did some of the like little novellas she wrote for the series. And Mm -hmm. it is a dancing show competition uh, with our Latina lead who doesn't want to be seen as like the stereotypes and our hero is on a reality TV show where his family are like in the wilderness and outdoorsy. And things are maybe not what they seem for this family also. Perhaps some things are a lie. Uh, and it follows their like very fun romance and like really good tension from what I remember. And I'm just, I'm oh. so excited it's getting a traditional release because I feel like it's one of those books that when I read it, people were reading it, but I felt like it deserved a lot more attention than it was getting. Cool. I didn't know all of that about it. I just knew it was kind of a Dancing with the Stars type yeah. romance, but that's exciting. So yeah, I'm I'm going to be reading this one as well, probably pretty soon. Uh, okay, this is mine. I think most of the historicals, if not all of them, are mine. <laughs> so. I forgot. I, I will admit when I was doing this list, I completely forgot to look at historicals. But... <laughs> Why am I not I surprised? <laughs> I mean, hey, I don't I'm reading read one right now. Are you? Yeah, I am. It's what are you reading? Uh, Temptations of a Wallflower by Eva Lee. Oh, cool. That yeah. So, good. I mean, yeah. like, I'm, I'm trying to read more this year. It's fine. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's fine. I added in a bunch of good historicals. So, uh, Eva Devon has a book coming out February 21st, The Duke's Secret Cinderella. And perhaps, not surprisingly, this is Cinderella. 
but make it historical. <laughs> That's I mean, what, what this is. I, I'm sold already yeah. on it is the thing. Like, yeah. That's all I need. <laughs> Yeah, well, and also Eva Devon just writes really fun historical romances Mm -hmm. with heroes who are not too alpha and heroines Mm -hmm. who are strong women and smart. And I just, I really enjoy her brand of historical Mm -hmm. romance. So I think this is going to be a winner. That's exciting. Yeah, I love this cover too. Very pink. It is very pink. (laughs) Moving on to March. Ah, yes. This is, I think, on both of our radar. But yeah, talk about this one. Uh, so March 7th, we have A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon. Um, this is by Sarah Holly, who is a co-host of the Wicked Wallflower Rom- Romance podcast, where they would oh, um, cool. interview different authors, which is already always really a fun time to listen to. Like, they had very good in- conversations. Uh, Jenny Nordback was on that with her. Mm-hmm. They they sometimes, I don't know if they still release episodes or not, honestly. They kind of, like, fell off a little during 2020, which is fine. But this is her debut, and it's about her trying to summon a demon. Well, she tries to summon Flower, and instead gets a demon, is what I should say. And he is a demon who's had his reputation tarnished, so he's trying to use his accidental summoning to better his reputation. So I just think it sounds really fun and silly. And I, I'm hoping, listen, I've got my fingers crossed. It's not another one of these weird witch romances we keep getting in which they're not... Like, they're just, like, contemporary with, like, the tiniest of sprinkling of, like, witchiness, if that makes yeah. sense. Like, they're barely putting anything in there, and they're just slapping a witch in the title or in on the cover and calling it a day. Yeah. So, fingers crossed for a little more than that. Yeah. Either way, I mean, it's a great title. Mm-hmm. Definitely attention-grabbing. It sounds cute. Okay. This is mine. March 14th, Solomon's Crown by Natasha Siegel. I think this is one that the publishers are trying really hard to push because I have gotten several emails from more than one publicist about this book. (laughs) So I think this is something they're really trying to push. Uh, It is a male-male rivals to lovers romance that is alternate history where King Philip and Richard of Aquitaine fall in love. Hmm. And I am, you know, I, I can sometimes be a little iffy on real historical figures However, the early reviews do look promising. So I was like, you know That's what? True. We're going to try it. And so if it's if it's good, it could be great. So we'll see. Mm-hmm. We'll see how this one goes. But uh, March 14th. I didn't even catch that this one was a romance just because the cover. Like that cover yeah. to me does not scream a romance. So yeah. Well, I don't think it's coming out from a an imprint that mm-hmm. does primarily romance. Yeah. And but yeah, it's a romance. No, it's it's just it's always interesting when that happens. And you're like, mm-hmm. hmm, okay, yep, yep. Oh, this is also me. Uh, March. I'm 14th. very excited about this one. I love this cover so much. It. I don't even know that much about it, but it just it got me. The mm-hmm. it's a YA debut. Flower Heart by Catherine Bakewell. It's being pitched as a cottage core fantasy romance, and that was enough for me. It's got a girl who must learn to control her magic and a curse and a boy she can't forget. And it just looks charming. It does. It's a stunning cover. It, mm-hmm. When I was flipping through right before, like, you pulled this for the the show and stuff, I was like, oh, that cover. I was like, I guess I'm going to have to read this so I can buy it. It's, it's really pretty. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that will take us to April. Yes. Wow. We're moving through these very quickly. <laughs> This might be a short episode. That's okay. We've had some long ones lately, so. That's true. Oh, and we have another one of my historicals. Sorry, I know we need to get to more of yours. Uh, April 11th, mm-hmm. Verity and the Forbidden Suitor by J.J. McAvoy. This is the second book in the series that started with Aphrodite and the Duke. I am loving that we're getting more diverse historical mm-hmm. established so wonderful this for anybody just listening it's got a beautiful black woman on the cover it is a historical romance this one has a spirited heiress who defies societal expectations for love and i read aphrodite and the duke and really enjoyed it it was um it was really interesting though it doesn't follow it doesn't follow the typical beats of a historical Mm -hmm. romance like it it was different but i think jj mcavoy previously had written contemporary indie romances and so this Mm -hmm. is that was kind of her first historical um not a perfect book but i liked it enough that i really want to try the next one okay it's one that i didn't i wanted to pick up because i love the cover of course like that first book's cover is stunning 
but um i kept hearing like so many mixed things so now that like you said it was yeah. that i think i will probably try it yeah like it follows different beats it wasn't what i expected mm-hmm. and a good chunk of the book takes place after they get married okay but i really i liked it like i don't mind really, that though yeah so yeah i that's why i haven't read historicals in ages i got very um burned out on the mm-hmm. repetitiveness so yeah for me that so may work really it. well yeah. yeah i'd give it a try all right this is yours. Yes. So April 18th, we have Bewitched by Laura Thalassus. I have a hate-love relationship with her as an author. I'm going to be upfront about that, where I have enjoyed and not enjoyed things upon reflection by her, mm-hmm. um, have DNF'd by her. But I am hopeful about this one, okay? Because, again, witches. Uh, this features a girl trying to get into a magical college. She accidentally summons a, a, like ancient being uh, who mistakes her as his wife. Oh, <laughs> so I just was like, I read that part. and I was like, oh, I have to read this. <laughs> I just, I, I have to know. Like, it just sounds like weird and wacky in a way that I'm like, okay. And it also sounds like a witch romance that again, isn't going to like hold back and just sprinkle in some paranormal. But right. also I love like a magical school setting when they're not yeah. teens. So that part is also why I'm very pumped. Because to me, like, I, I just, it's hard to be like the sexy high school. Like, I'm like, no. Let's not. Yeah. No, so. a magical college sounds good. That's exciting. Yeah. I hope we see more of them. I'm like, what I'm hoping is that the popularity of Zodiac Academy mm-hmm. gives us some better so. magical college books. Yeah. And this is coming from um, Bloom, who's picked up like tons of former indie authors' books to publish. Okay. So I feel like, you know, I, I feel like there's a good chance that we're seeing the Zodiac Academy like aftermath now you know we're eight books into that people are reading it yeah so let's see we have a comment beth bewitched i'm picturing the demon showing up like yes dear you called (laughs) yes exactly like (laughs) i just i just think of i when i read that premise i was just like that's amazing (laughs) it's amazing yeah that's great i haven't tried laura thalassa before but i'm i do not think you would like any of her other books so (laughs) good to know good to know thank you um Oh, yeah. Did you have this one, too? Oh, yeah. Do you want to do this one? No, you do do it. Okay. I was like, it's fine. (laughs) Um, We can can share. April 18th, we have The Fiancé Farce by Alexandria Belfler. Um, She invents a fake fiancé that is based off of a woman who models for romance covers (laughs) and tells her family about her. And she works at a bookstore. And then the model lady shows up. And she has that. to convince her to fake date with her. And I just was like, yes, yes, please. It um, sounds so good. And I love the cover. Just, it's such a good cover. It's so funny. Yeah. Like to me, just that that's like the premise. Like I was like, yeah, I'm in. Like again, yeah. I'm very easily sold on weird premises over here. So, mm-hmm. um, so yeah, this is just one that I'm really excited for. Yeah. We have a question about if there are rom-coms on this list. I think I'd vibe with those. This is definitely going to be a rom-com. Yeah, this is a rom-com. And quite a a few of these are. I think Mm -hmm. I like a lot of lighter, not always, but I like a lot of lighter romance. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely why I come to the genre. And I've liked the other things I've read by this author before. So I'm hopeful um, because like the first two books I've read by her were decent. Yeah. I also think Eva Devon does a pretty good job of kind of lighter historical Mm -hmm. romances that have kind of a humorous element. So this might be a good option as well. Oh yeah. This was yours too. This sounds so good. I added this to my wish list. Yes. I was immediately like, I need this. So April 23rd, we have role playing by Kathy Yardley. She is writing an older couple romance where the, they're literally like she's 40s and he's 50s like late 40s we're we don't get that enough first of all no so i'm very excited but her son makes her be more social so she ends up playing a video game and they are she's in a guild with a guy and they start talking and it turns into more and i just think this sounds so stinking cute it sounds so cute um and i just think it sounds like such a fun one this is another one that's being billed as a rom-com i don't you know it's hard to know until you read them how rom com these are is the right. hardest part um for you know but this is just ugh, the cover everything about it i am just like so pumped for this book yes 
Yeah, it looks so good. No, I immediately was like, yes, adding to the wish list. That mm-hmm. sounds great. Yeah, it will be on my Kindle the day it comes out. There's no that. other option. Definitely. Oh. <laughs> An author that is very popular that I have not yet read. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I put yeah. this on here because I felt like it would be weird not to include it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this April 25th, we have Emily Henry's newest book, Happy Place, uh, an author that I have a hate love with. So I would be very curious to see what you think when you start reading her or if you give her books a try. Um, I, have, I have her last one mm-hmm. from Libra FM, but like, I don't know why. For some reason, I feel like I'm not going to vibe with her books, but I don't have a good reason for that. I thought the same and I didn't love Beach Read. I did like People We Meet on Vacation more. And I'm curious, I haven't read Book Lovers yet. Okay. I will be reading Book Lovers in the next month, we'll say, for reasons. If uh, you want, tell me when you read it. Maybe I will, too, because I have the audiobook okay. for that. Same, and that's how I'm reading it. I'm going to audiobook okay. it. They're very, like, good, not what I want to say. I feel like they mix the fiction genre into romance a little more than maybe what we're used to when we come to romance. Yeah. But uh, I think the premise of this one sounds funny, or it could be very funny uh they broke up five months ago and are pretending they're still together uh on a friendship did i say the book title no i don't oh, know. okay it's emily henry's happy place if i did not i was like i don't remember <laughs> yeah i was like i was not gonna look into it but i figure we'll also probably get arcs from libro again with this one very That's likely very um but yeah i just thought the idea that they'd broken up for five months and are on this trip to maine with their friends having to pretend they haven't broken up it sounds like potentially a really fun setup agreed depending on but i'm hearing mixed oh things on some early copies but i'm also just really like curious yeah i love this cover too i just love how bright and pink it is like i was like this is fun this is nice it's a good spring cover for late Mm -hmm. april i like it yeah um lovely reading says i hope it's good because she will be at the rom-con Okay, so Catherine, cool. that's awesome. I hope it is too, because I would love to get uh, yeah. role playing signed by her. And yeah, role playing is also going into Kindle Unlimited. I think okay, it's great. a not like romance, so that's an Amazon okay. published. Awesome. All right, and then I've got another historical for you. <laughs> April twenty fifth. These are fun too. I like us mm-hmm. like I find when I find a historical author I love, I just keep reading their stuff. So this is the beginning of a new series from Susanna Craig, The Lady Knows Best, mm-hmm. and it it has a controversial advice columnist, a jilted lover, and an irresistible rake. And she writes great. <clears throat> excuse me great funny fun heroines that are smart um and heroes who i also just really enjoy and y'all know i'm picky about my heroes i di- mm-hmm. don't like the super alpha thing and i i just think that her take on historicals is really good and interesting so i loved her last series that she just got done writing and so i'm i'm excited to check this one out i'm this sounds cute yeah also, I need to read Susanna Craig. I know you've been loving her, so she's been on, yeah. like, my list to get to at some point. I feel like she's really underrated. I think mm-hmm. this also might be her first that's coming out in, like, a traditional mm-hmm. mass market kind of thing. So This cover better communicates what it is, too, I think, yeah. than her other series covers did. So I, I agree. I think it's a new publisher. Mm-hmm. So. <clears throat> that's All right. May. May. Okay, I, like, I feel like we're going into May now, but maybe there's a surprise release. Yes. Okay, I've got another YA one for you. Imogen, obviously, by Becky Albertalli. I really want to read this one. It's about a girl who's always been a big ally of the LGBT community who discovers she isn't as straight as she thought she was. <laughs> I love this setup so yeah. much. I really I really want to read this one. I feel like I'm hit and miss with Becky Albertelli's books, but mm-hmm. this is one that I definitely have on my radar and hope to pick up. And then May 9th, I'm excited for this series. Claire Legrand, who I love, she's written a lot of YA and middle grade mm-hmm. fantasy and uh, horror, is writing her first 
adult steamy romance fantasy series and each book in the series is inspired by a different ballet which i think is really cool i want to say this one is inspired by giselle but don't quote me on that because i'm not 100 certain of that it might be a different one that was inspired by giselle but a crown of ivy and glass by claire legrand uh and this one is being pitched as bridgerton meets akatar and I don't know, like people are mixed on whether that's actually a good pitch for it. But I think probably what you want to take away from it is that it is a historical manners sort of setup with magic and lots of drama and mm -hmm. steamy romance. So I'm I'm definitely excited. I'm excited for this. I think it yeah. sounds like we're getting uh, we're finally starting to get things that are like leaning into a mix of that historical magical stuff now. Yes which I love. So, so yeah, it's always fun. Yes. And it comes out on my birthday. That's so fun. That is fun. <laughs> Yay. We know what you'll be doing all day. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> You're just all day yeah. Right. Right. Um, oh, and I had this too. I guess I had a lot of the May releases. Uh, this, I also am excited for her good side by Rebecca Weatherspoon. So her and Talia Hibbert both this year are doing YA debuts. They're known for writing steamy adult romances mm -hmm. and they're writing their first YA romances. This one is a fluffy romance where best friends practice date, which sounds freaking adorable. I love this. I, I know. I forgot this was coming out this year and I saw it on the list and I was like, oh yeah, that's coming out. Yeah. I have an arc of it and I'm, I'm excited. I think it's going to be oh, super cute. I do too. Mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be yeah. really fun. Yeah, I, I trust Rebecca to transition well between adult and YA books. Yeah, because I've seen her do a variety of steam levels in different mm -hmm. books. Like I think she'll do a good job with it. Uh, it looks like we've got a couple people in the comments very excited about the Crown of Ivy and Glass book. Yes. So glad people are excited for that one. And then for another historical, we don't have a cover just yet, but May 30th, An Island Princess Starts a Scandal by Adriana Herrera. This is the second book in a series. The first one was one of my favorite romances of 2022. Mm -hmm. And this one is a sapphic historical romance with a scandalous duchess and a Caribbean artist destined for a loveless marriage um, and kind of a bargain that they make in Paris in the late 1800s for a summer. And uh, I think it's going to be delightful. I'm really excited. I need, I'm, I'm reading an heiress in Paris, like in the next month. So yes. I'm very excited. Oh, I'm so happy. I want more people to read it. It deserves more love and attention because it's so good. Yeah. I'm very excited for it. Yay. And did I do all the May release? I think you got all of May. <laughs> I think I did everything in May. Um, so, sorry. Uh, May 30th, when the vibe is right. This is another YA one. It's Enemies to Lovers set during Trinidad's Carnival by Sarah Dess. I really enjoyed her debut, which was Where the Rhythm Takes You, which was a uh, modern retelling of Persuasion set in Trinidad. And um, yeah, this looks great. So I'm excited to read more from her as well. So... Yeah. Oh, this is a good point. Beth says, back to March 7th, I'm looking forward to the Fox Love King, a fantasy romance. You know what? I didn't think to put that on this, li this list because I had originally had it on my anticipated fantasy list, but I think you're right that it is a fantasy romance. So uh, Hannah Witten kind of does both. Both. Yeah. If it's the same Hannah Witten. Yes, it is. Okay. It is, yeah. Because she added an initial now and I was like, wait, is this a different person? Never mind. No. <laughs> I, did, I didn't know there was an initial there so <laughs> yeah yeah i think it's new um okay june which i think only has one and it's only mine. has one and it's yours <laughs> uh so june 27th we have the newest ashley poston adult romance mix interesting thing called the seven year slit i enjoyed the dead romantics and i understand why a lot of people didn't but i think i went in knowing enough about it to be like open to it if that makes sense mm -hmm. uh this follows a book publicist who lives in her grandma's like old apartment and a man who lived in the apartment seven years before her and their relationship that develops through a weird time slip situation i mostly like i'm just interested in how the like how this is gonna work if that makes sense and how like that's all gonna play out together yeah. um it's one of those ones it's like it's either gonna be really great and amazing or not but she's kind of like keeping herself guarded and stuff and then of course she 
finds a strange man. It's her aunt's apartment, not her grandma's, sorry. Uh, standing in her kitchen um, that she's never seen before. And hmm. it turns out that he, uh, she's literally seven years in the future from when he was there. So I'm just like, I, I just, I'm like, I don't know how this is going to work. Yeah. I, I guess yeah. like the lake house. Yeah. Somebody saying like the lake house. Yeah. I'm kind of a hard sell on time slip romances, to be honest. I've but... not really read any, which is why I'm curious. Okay, try it. I mean, some people so, love no. them. I mean, there's a reason that they continue to publish. I've read several, yeah. and I just, they're, but you know what? Time travel stuff in general is usually just not, not really usually my, my favorite. thing. Same, so. same. But yeah. I liked the Dead Romantics enough for her adult debut that I was like, okay. you know, we'll try it. It, it yeah. looks, it sounds neat at the very yeah. least. It's going to be an experience, read... yeah. <laughs> you know? Why not? I haven't read The Dead Romantics, but I know some people who really liked it. So, mm-hmm. I, I think you would probably enjoy it. What is it about exactly? I don't know. It's about a girl who uh, ghostwrites for a really popular romance author. I'm trying to think about how to summarize this without like spoiling it. Okay. Um, and <laughs> she goes to meet with her new boss, editor person. And then something happens and he is no longer perhaps not alive perhaps he is alive something he gets like hit by a car and he's like in the hospital and she has to go home because her dad's dying and her family runs like the local funeral home and like her dad dies and it's her process of grieving and him appearing to her as like a ghost being sort of thing and then it's like a ghost romance kind of yeah okay. so i'm like i don't want to spoil it because like yeah, yeah, yeah it's a romance obviously you yeah. know he's not really dead um but yeah it's really interesting and it, i i found the gr- themes of grief in it really powerful okay. um and in- enjoyable to read hmm. i guess <laughs> you know okay. what i mean one of those yeah. where like it played it played in a different area than we normally get out of romances which is right. what i think i liked about it cool so there's that yeah great all right so that's all we have for june july this is you okay Yes, so July 11th, we have another Raylo fic coming our way called Ah. Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. Yes, this is a former fic. Um, This one is a wedding planner and a florist. He's a grumpy hero, and the heroine is avoiding love. So I'm just, I will forever pick up anything that I know was a former fic, because I'm always curious as to how it translates into two traditionally published books. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know why. I just have this fascination with it. Yeah. And, you know, it's been going on for ages, pre-Twilight right. even. You know, you just, yeah. it wasn't as well known that it was a fic maybe as it is now or as easily figured out. But like this cover, you know, the love, ha- you you know. I can see it. You can see it, you know. Yeah. Um, but this is one that a lot of people really, really liked. And I'm just really curious. I think it has an interesting premise. I love the idea of like a wedding planner and, you know, a florist. I think that's a fun, two fun jobs, different jobs, you know. Mm-hmm. So we'll see. We'll see. Okay. Cool. Um, July 11th, we're also getting Play to Win by Jody Slaughter. I think this is the second in like a companion series. Uh, Bet on it was the first mm-hmm. one, which I really liked. This one has a winning lottery ticket, becomes a second chance at love. So it's a second chance romance. Um, Bet on it. I, I liked it was a little heavy mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you know, dealt a lot with mental health, but I thought it was very good. And it was my first time reading Jody Slaughter. I, I don't, this is a weird cover design though. It is. I don't love this cover. Like I can't, it, you know what it, the problem I think is, is that like, it looks like the shirt looks like it's her front, but her yeah. head is mm-hmm. turned I was so gonna ask. back. And it kind of creeps me out a little bit. I was going to ask, is her head, is she supposed to be facing <laughs> forward or is she turning over her shoulder? I cannot I, tell. I I'm, think she's supposed to be turning over her shoulder, but it, I don't know. It's but it weird. it looks I, like she could almost be facing forward. With her head half twisted all around. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> like, we've got like an exorcist moment yeah, like, with the head. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We need to um, fix the shading. I don't know. Yeah. Something needs to shift. I don't know. So I don't love the art on this cover, but I am interested in the book. So mm-hmm. we'll see. Oh, okay. Also July 11th, Mortal Follies by Alexis Hall. And this is a 
lovely, beautiful mm-hmm. cover. Sapphic historical romance with a young noblewoman and a rumored witch that she's thrown together to- together with. Again, yeah, my keyword here, witch. I'm in. Yeah, Every and time. this and the fact that this is a historical. I'm so yeah. excited for this, and it's a sapphic. I love like, this cover. Oh, I do too. It's beautiful. I kind of want to just pre-order it, but and Alexis Hall, I generally really like mm-hmm. his romances. Um, so same. It sounds so, great. I, yeah, it's gonna be a yeah. fun one. We have a comment, play to win. He also looks a little stalkery on the cover. Not wrong. Fair. Yeah, You're, fair. yeah I, <laughs> I, I, yeah. Yeah, a little. I, I can, mm-hmm. Hopefully and she's the book just losing her better. head. <laughs> I don't know what's happening with this The cover. head is just killing. I cannot handle that head. It's yeah. so weird. It is, it's weird, but I, hopefully the book's good. <laughs> so, Yeah. Kelsey Lou, hey, uh, oh my gosh, Mortal Follies looks stunning. Definitely adding to my wish list. Yes, which actually is a good reminder that I should do that as well after this because it looks beautiful. Yeah, I that cover, it's everything. Mm-hmm. August. Oh, our next one. Mm-hmm. I'll go since you this time yeah. forever. <laughs> yeah, August eighth, we have the newest Dark Olympus, which will be Cruel Seduction by Katie Robert. I think this is the one I'm most excited for because it's a poly knot. With Aphrodite, yeah. Hephaestus, Adonis, Adonis, and Pandora. I was like, I feel like I did not say his name. Whatever. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Uh, all Katie keeps saying is this one's very messy. This one's very messy. And I'm like, I am so excited <laughs> for how messy this is going to be. Yeah. I, so we'll we'll be reading this late in the year yes. when it comes out for We're the be reading along, it in so. September we read this or October. I, I think, remember. I think, yeah, it's one of the, one of the two, mm-hmm. but. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm yeah. very pumped. Yep. And there's a few more coming next year in the series. And so the series 2024 has um like t- there's like 10 books in this series. So Yeah. We'll have to we'll read them all and then we'll have to come back after the last yeah. of the next few are out. <laughs> and then like and then read the read new them. ones. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be fun. This oh, is here. Too. Yes. So it's I should say August, <laughs> not April 23rd. That's okay. Of course oh. I did that. Oh, yeah. I we should we have a comment. Aphrodite and Hephaestus are frequently messy. G- good point. True. <laughs> so I mean it's I just it's love when brand. like Katie has been very openly like this book is very messy. And I'm like, tell me more. <laughs> tell me more. I, so I August 23rd, not <laughs> April, <laughs> we have <laughs> Curves for Day- Days by Laura Mower. Um, this is a I think it's her debut I've never heard of her before yeah this was billed as Olivia Day meets Lucy score I've never read Lucy score so I I don't have any opinions on that part but Olivia Day of course has me intrigued at the very least uh, yeah. Rose wins the lottery and is forced into the public because of it so people are just harassing her constantly and then this guy in her town Angus who she like ends up friends with is trying to help her with her financial struggles and he doesn't know she won the lottery um, and it's their romance. The cover, st- like, preview that I saw on Edelweiss was really cute. Uh, you know, definitely a fat character on the cover. So I'm very excited to see where it goes. I feel like this is, you know, one of those ones. It's either going to be really, really amazing. Or not. Or not. But yeah. I don't know which. And it's one that I hadn't heard about when I saw yeah. it. And I was like, oh, I'm excited just for yeah. something different. I would love to see more fat romances Mm -hmm. that are like olivia dade i've 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 been burned before (laughs) yeah no same and that's the hard part where i'm like who knows yeah like Uh, is it gonna be good or not we'll see yeah all right august 22nd knockout by sarah mclean uh chaotic blue stocking and the buttoned up detective enlisted to keep her out of trouble i mean if that doesn't sound like a fun historical romance <laughs> i am mogan's imogen's book not mogan imogen's book is going to be chaos and i cannot wait yeah but i love the like chaotic and buttoned up thing i think it could be oh it's the depending best idea, but yeah i think it'll be good yeah and we have September. Oh, yes. Okay, September 5th. I'm so excited for this because I loved the first book in the series. I think series. we just got a cover today for this, by the way. 
Did we? Oh, I, I have so. to look it up after this. Um, Better Hate Than Never by Chloe Leese coming out September 5th. It is childhood enemies to lovers and it is a taming of the shrew retelling. I really, really loved, um, what was it? The first book came out this year and it was a retelling of Much Ado About Nothing. Um, um, oh my gosh. I, why can't I think of it? It's the two two wrongs make a right. Two wrongs make a right. Yes, and it was wonderful. So mm-hmm. I am. It, it was my first time reading from Chloe Lee's, but I know a lot of people really love her indie work, and this is her mm-hmm. first traditionally published series. Also, I love Shakespeare retellings, so I think the idea is brilliant. And I want to say the third book because it's following three sisters. So I think the mm-hmm. third book is going to be a Romeo and Juliet. So I'm excited. This might have to be one of our read-alongs in 2024. Yeah. That'd be fun. Nothing in October. <laughs> nope. And then I had one, I think one for November, maybe two. I, I want to say this might be our last one. but This might be um, our last. Yeah. So November 7th is, this This had a recent title change. It used to be titled something else, but now it's titled Do Your Worst by Rosie Dannon. It's a quirky romance where best friends try to cover up an accidental murder in order to claim a surprise inheritance, and there's a hot P.I. Okay. <laughs> you know, this is like reading the um, four aunties on a wedding. Like, the premise yeah. that you're like, what? And then you read and you're like, all right, I'm here for it. Yeah. I've just, I've really enjoyed Rosie Dannon's first two books, mm-hmm. and um, she does, like, fun, modern, sex-positive contemporaries. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so this is on my list just because I've liked her other stuff, so mm-hmm. we'll see how it does. Oh, we do have one more. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was like, I think we might have one more. Why don't you do this? Because I know this is probably on both Yeah. Um, November 7th, we've got Iris Kelly Doesn't Date by Ashley Herring Blake. So this is the third in that series. Mm -hmm. Would that be right? Okay. I was like, is this three now? Um, It's sapphic, fake relationship with one night stand. I still haven't read um, the newest one. Me either. Astrid Parker. I have it. Astrid Parker doesn't care or something. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't read that. I haven't read that one yet. I'm kind of, I'm kind of saving it because I don't want to be like done yet. Um, But I'm excited for more from Ashley Herring Blake's adult Mm -hmm. romances. I feel like, you know, Delilah Green is on my favorites list. I think it's on yours too. It is. And, it's, they're just, they're very fun. They're yeah. very fun. So I'm hopeful that we get Same. like, you know, another solid one this year from her. Agreed. And I imagine we meet, did we meet, I, we already met Iris. I think and Delilah, so. did we? Uh, now my brain can't remember. remember names. It's fine. Anyways, if we did, names. I'm excited. And even if we didn't, I'm excited. <laughs> names are hard. Yeah. And I know we yeah. didn't have anything for December yet. Yep, no. So, um, Yeah. Mm-hmm. lots of upcoming releases anything yeah. that is currently up for pre-order is linked in the video description or in the show notes if you're uh listening so feel free to go check them out um and hopefully this was helpful to pat out your mm-hmm. romance tbrs for the year it was this this has been fun so read along with yeah. us if you're we'll be back for our next romance episode in february Mm -hmm. i can tell you it's going to be around it's going to be valentine's day (laughs) so february 14th we'll be back for our Mm -hmm. uh real read along so if you want to read along with us we'll be doing that uh if and the next episode i'll be back with liana on january 31st for the first book in our witcher read along the last wish by anders sapkowski so if you're joining Mm -hmm. us for the witcher read along that begins then if you enjoy the podcast we would appreciate if you take a moment to rate and review us so we can continue to reach more listeners and if you're interested in getting early access to episodes and exclusive bonus content with every episode consider supporting us on patreon huge thanks to all of our supporting patrons including our world expanding patrons trina and stephanie you're making what we do possible and paying for the costs of what we do so thank you Mm -hmm. and uh yeah again this has been chapter three podcasts we're your hosts bethany and izzy you can follow us on twitter instagram and tiktok at chapter three podcast and also find us on our individual youtube channels the next episode again will be here on january 31st uh, talking about the last wish and this episode's bonus content will be available to patrons next week thanks for listening mm-hmm.